How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I wanted to bring you along with me because I wanted to put my Sony a7R 2 to the test to see if it still holds up on, in 2020. So I was kind of scrolling through social media and I kind of got the, the feeling that I just wanted to create and bring along with me. So we're going to put this bad boy down and get to creating. So let's jump into it. So I hope you enjoyed that little sequence. Now we have switched over to my Sony a7R 2 to use for the rest of the vlog, just to bring you along with me to just test it out and see how it holds. So we're gonna drive somewhere and go create some stuff. So one thing that I noticed right off the front from the R2 is that it has a cropping factor when you go into video mode because I think it was because of the megapixels they said or something like that. I know the R4 doesn't have it but the price point is massively different so obviously that's not a bad deal. But the one good thing about the extra megapixels is obviously that with photography you can kind of use that to crop in a little bit if you need to and also it's great for printing so that's one of the pluses for the megapixel side of it obviously the drawback is when you do video that it does that crop in but it's not that big of a deal to me so it's a good camera for the price point for that matter so so as the ease of use for this camera is actually not too bad but I do obviously find it a lot easier to use my a7 III when it comes to versatility for this camera because like the a7 III has a little joystick so it's a lot easier to kind of do like the focus point if you want to do that way and also the touch screen with it. But with this one, I mean, obviously you're also not paying a lot of more money for that. So it's not too bad. You can still customize it. That's what I do to move like my focus point. I put it on like one of the control levels for that. And a drawback that I've noticed with this camera though, it has been that the software itself is a little bit more outdated versus my a7 III. So the one thing that I do like about the a7 III is how much faster it is. But then again, the a7 R2 is a little bit older camera, so it makes sense why it wouldn't be as updated as the a7 III with how quick it is. And the example that I'll give you is when I do a burst mode actually, the a7 III, you can kind of already view the photos pretty relatively quick. With the a7R2, it always says like writing to memory, and it takes a little bit of a while because they are bigger files, but because of like the, the style of the software, I guess, for the camera itself, it takes a while, I'm assuming, because I have a pretty fast SD card, so I'm not really sure if there's been an update, but that's something that I've noticed myself. So another thing that we have to talk about the camera is its battery life. Sadly, uh, the battery life isn't the, the best because the battery sizes are smaller. Like the a7 III and the R4 are a lot bigger so they kind of hold out a little bit longer. So you're going to need a lot more batteries. But with that being said, the batteries themselves are a little bit cheaper. So you can kind of stock up. I have like six batteries mainly because I had them some from like my A6000 so they used for that one so I just kept them around and you just change it more often so it's not a big deal breaker for the price point so that's something to consider it but I think it's still a very good 
camera itself. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of some examples of photos that I've taken over time with this camera so you can see the quality of it. And that way you can see some photo examples and kind of make up your mind and see how much you like the photos from it. And there you go, check them out. So now we're going to test out the slow motion. It has 120 frames per second, but it's at 720. But I'm going to upscale it to 4K just to see how well it holds. I mean, I'm just kind of curious to see how it'll be because um, I haven't tried that out because usually I just use my a7 III and upscale it to 4K. But we're going to see how well it holds and yeah, go from there. Dudes. So I've made some friends out here. What up? So there you go, that's a little tasty of the kind of 120p cinematic b-roll kind of style just so you can see what you think would love to know kind of leave a comment i always love to chat talk gear so just leave a comment tell me what you guys think of that just your thoughts on the a7r2 so far so so in all honesty i think this camera is still pretty great for what it is for 2020 that's why i actually bought it this year as my second camera mainly for photography so obviously for video i have my a7 III that's my main focus with it because it has a lot more user friendly in the sense it's just a lot faster but this camera is still pretty great for what it is so if you're in the market to get a good entry level kind of style of full frame this is a great camera to go with so definitely the green light from my end i would love to kind of have your thoughts on it let me know make sure you like and subscribe on on the channel if you haven't already but with all that said and done hope you like this video share it with a friend and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye